Hey everybody, this is Jonathan Schrantz, and today I want to take a deep dive into the theory of the Urasov Gambit. This is one of my favorite openings, I think it's really good for white, and I really want to explore this now because Stockfish 12 has just come onto the scene. So anytime there's a new, stronger engine in town, and this one's 130 points higher rated than the previous versions, it really is a good idea to, uh, to go back through your repertoire and see if you can find any holes, see if you can find any new ideas, and I just want to explore today, I want to go over my favorite opening with Stockfish and see if there's any gaps or if there's anything new that we can learn here. And this, I mean, this is such a tremendous opening. I, I do want to look deeply at the theory, but I also want to give some of the key ideas as we go along as well for anybody that might be a little bit newer to this opening. So I really like this Bishop's opening. Not only does this frustrate anybody that was looking for a Petrov, because now we're going to play a move like Pawn to D4 and ask him a lot of questions, but we've also invite a Urasov Gambit with this move order. So if they do take our pawn, this is the gambit that we want to discuss here today. And the whole point of giving away this pawn is to really accelerate the development and try to get an initiative from the start. And I think there are a lot of very, very dangerous lines. This drives the knight back. I would recommend knight to c3. This is just fully taking control over that d5 square. And white has a very simple idea. Bring the bishop out, get castled, bring the rook into the game, look for sacrifices, and try to checkmate the opponent. And black, for his part, has three defenses. The one that I've actually seen the most often that I want to explore first is pawn to c6 and pawn to d5, setting up this big pawn wall here. Seems like an excellent idea. Try to get your share of the center and then get all of your pieces out and get castled. This is what I've run into most often in the master database here. You can actually see that it's not the most popular variation, but it is definitely a good place to start, especially because I also kind of want to introduce a new line or at least a very unpopular line that I think could be really dangerous and it's really direct and easy to understand from the white point of view. But then there's defenses with knight to c6 and we'll need to look at two of them. The knight comes to c6, kicks our queen away, and then black either plays an immediate d5 or plays pawn to d6. I don't think the pawn to d5 lines are that critical. I think the knight c6 and d6 lines uh, are some of the most resilient, so there is where we actually should spend a little bit of time trying to get to know the plans as well. But let's start with uh, the c6 d5 plan, and in either case, this bishop is inevitably going to go to e7. And so yeah, we can start with this, something like we develop to g5, suffer a small amount of lag, and then something like c6 castles d5 is a normal way of starting this variation. Now, most of the time, white just simply sticks to the plan, plays a move like rook to e1, which I actually will put on the board, because it is kind of nice just to demonstrate how there are all these pins. So it is a tricky move, like if you take this bishop, you actually blunder a mate in one. So there's a lot of tricky pins and there's a lot of stuff that's going on. Uh, but I do want to recommend a very, very direct line here. And that line starts with queen to h4. And the main idea is that now if they castle, we can start making threats against the king immediately. So something like bishop to d3, threatening to remove this knight, which would remove the defender of this h-pawn, uh, becomes very tricky. There's really, there's two pawn moves, but g6 is just not going to be a very good one. In this case, we can bring, now we can bring our rook in, and this actually will be threatening to remove a defender of the knight. So if black tries to block, well, now we have a new target, and you can see just how easy it can be for white to slowly get an initiative here. And now we're creating a lot of pressure on e6. Um, it's not easy to defend because you can't use the queen. The queen needs to be defending this knight. So it becomes a very, very difficult defensive task for black if they're not careful. But okay, so if they play pawn to h6, I think this is a, is a very interesting idea. But whenever they play h6, I mean, you really gotta be bold as black because you're always gotta be on the lookout for bishop takes h6. This is something the opponents are going to have to be calculating on every single turn where you have to figure out, are you just gonna take back? Are you gonna play a move like knight to e4? There's all sorts of crazy stuff that can happen. But what if we just sacrifice the bishop and bring the rook in now? I think this is a, is a very interesting and it can be very, very dangerous. For example, if they now take our bishop, we can take back with the knight and it becomes a very, very difficult task. We are probably just trying to uh, to sneak in bishop to h7. So for example, if we play, so I guess rook to e8, maybe this is the best defense. But for example, if we make a mistake for the opponent, bishop to h7 is our main threat here. So for example, if the king goes this way, we can now move our bishop, force this guy back, and there might be some sacrifices on the d5 square. So here, rook takes d5 is a very, very interesting idea. The point is after we go here, we take back with the knight 
And this is now attacking one of the defenders that needs to be defended. And it looks like uh, maybe bishop h5 is just hanging in there. Uh, bishop h5, which lets us play knight takes. But if you go here, we should be able to check and win the queen. So something like this is the main idea, and we can win the queen. This looks very, very, very dangerous, so I don't think the opponent would want to, to go for this. Uh, if they do take our bishop, we'll come back and look at the rook e8 defense. If they do take here, the point is we can go here, and now if uh, g6, which looks like a very nice idea to get the king over and bring the rook into the game, well now queen to h6 takes away a square from the king. So this actually makes it a very difficult time for, for black to, uh, to improve the king here. So something like bishop to d6, with some idea of checking and picking up our knight, could be met with a move like pawn to g3, and eventually there will be some sort of tactic to try to remove this knight. For example, uh, queen to c7, kind of renewing some sort of ideas of potentially uh, trying, to, trying to get this move in when you can. Here the computer points out bishop to c4, and also Knight c to e4, which is the move that I, I think I would really prefer here, has some ideas of just removing the defender of this knight. Notice that our knight is actually immune, because here we'd be able to take with our rook, swing the rook over. Not going to be so easy to uh, stop us from checkmating you. So uh, these things get out of control. Um, is there an actual defense here? So after here, can you take, and then in this position, play rook to e8? Is this a possibility here? Well, maybe, maybe not. Uh, obviously, we're going to start with a move like this, and after the king runs away, we are going to be able to now reposition our bishop. So something like bishop to e4 is probably pretty strong. Bishop to d3 is, uh, is probably a very reasonable idea. Bishop to d3, I assume we just repeat. So if we play bishop to e4, now there could be some sort of... This knight might have to go somewhere. We're just threatening to sneak back in here. So knight h5 might be one of the only defenses. Now, we can obviously pick up this knight, but our knight is hanging, so we can toss this check in, pick up this knight, and uh, something like bishop to e6 might be met with bishop to d3, which I assume is actually threatening to take this bishop and plant a guy on g3. So if I hit the x button, it will tell me what the threat is. So the threat is rook takes e6, and that would be incredibly winning. Uh, so, I mean, this is all very dangerous. I don't, I don't think black would want to play this way. And so the question becomes, if you can't take the bishop... Uh, what exactly are you doing? Um, yeah, I mean, so we can keep playing around. So it looks like we are actually going to be taking... I'm, I'm now hitting the X button again so we can see the threat. And we threaten to either take on H6. We might even be threatening Rook takes E7. In all these cases, it's very, very dangerous for the opponent. So I, I don't know. I think this is, is one of the more interesting lines that is definitely worth exploring if you guys are interested in the Urasov Gambit. But let's, uh, let's come back here, let's come to our main position, and let's study the other two defenses really quick here. Something like knight to c6, this attacks the queen, forces our queen to move order, over. And uh, let's start with one of the easier ones. So, okay, most of the time they're playing here, then here. They're either castling or here they can play d5. So if they play d5 right away, we're going to come back and look at d6, which I think is the better way to play. Uh, we can castle, or there's even some sacrifices here right away. Um, I think it's safe enough to castle, just to point out one line here, after bishop to e6, defending the pawn. Now there usually are some sort of sacrifices. So we trade a bunch of times with an idea of playing c4 at the end of the line. Uh, and I think this is actually really good. The computer's not as impressed, but something like trading a whole bunch of times and playing c4, I think is actually very, very strong. If the opponent has to play a move like f6, we should just be able to take here. And the queen has to go to some uncomfortable square. The, the computer's not horribly impressed. I mean, maybe this is viable for black, but any line where we get our pawn back and we've kind of forced this queen to an awkward square and we've, we've provoked the move f6, uh, we're going to have the better pieces. So it looks like, yeah, we can move this guy away. We can even probably set up some sort of tactics here where we sacrifice the bishop. Uh, there's all sorts of, of brilliant moves. So even by letting the computer think here for a minute, it kind of discovered that something like this should be really strong. I don't think this is actually a, a line that uh, the players with the white pieces should be fearing. But running back the tape, let's just go back. Let's start right here from this position. And let's look at what might be the most testing variation, which is uh, when they play, like they can play the bishop here first. That's fine. Pawn to d6. And one of the main ideas is they might not castle. They want to try to trade a lot of the pieces here. So after castling, uh, bishop to e6 is the main idea. And they're just saying, let's get some pieces off the board. And I think there's actually two interesting solutions here. Um, and I think the, the main move that players play with the white pieces actually might be a mistake because this if black hasn't committed to castling, 
it, you might not actually have time for this. It's not as direct. It's not actually making the threats that we want it to make. So I think we should consider the main move. This probably, maybe this is the best way to play. But also an easy solution is to just simply take this bishop. So I do want to just point this out first. If they go here, the idea is queen to c4. Um, okay, wait, we can start with this. Poke at this pawn. If it gets defended, queen to c4. The idea is to put as much pressure here as you can. It's not easy for this pawn to move because there are some pins. So something like this, knight takes e5. Uh, and, you know, if you have to go somewhere like this, you might also be getting into a little bit of trouble. Something like queen to e2. Uh, here black gets to hold on to the pawn. And they can play king to f7 on the next turn here. Uh, they could castle and just give up the pawn, but that's nothing to fear. If we're worried about them going here, a simple solution is to take here, and after the, let's say, the bishop takes back, knight e4 is, uh, is an interesting position. Now our knights might, one of our knights might be hopping in here. Uh, you know, there's a lot of dark squares that our knights actually might be hopping to. So something like this uh, is, is very promising for white, just with the exposed king and uh, the amount of pressure that we have on the position. So something like this, I think it, it will be in black's best interest to just give up the pawn, let us take here. If our queen gets harassed, we're going to go back to e2. And we still have, you know, a little bit of pressure here. At some point, we're probably thinking uh, if we want, after some consolidating moves, at some point in the middle game, we might be taking this knight and planting our knight here on the, on the light squares, uh, just trying to say our knight is better than your bishop. Something like that might be a possible strategic goal, but a lot can happen here. I don't think we're too worried, especially if we get our pawn back. Uh, but maybe a little bit more critical is to actually in this position just bring the rook in right away. This does allow them to trade. Now, I had a game recently against a Grandmaster opponent that played here, and I missed my chance. I didn't know the best move here, but apparently I actually have a very strong move in bishop to b5. Pinning this knight, which I'm assuming threatens to go here. I'm hitting the x key again. Knight to e5 is the major threat. So even something like this could be met with knight to d4, knight to e5, and I could have actually had a very strong position here. But uh, you live and you learn. What black should be doing in this position is taking this bishop. I assume we'll take back. There's, uh, there's some room for exploring some other stuff, but let's just take this bishop back. And if they castle, we're still a pawn down, but we can go for... Uh, this strategy again, there's interesting ideas of attacking. You can play h4, you can bring your queen over. But again, this is just kind of a simple and easy idea to understand of taking this guy and planting a knight on d5. And I think if you look at this for just a little bit, it actually feels really comfortable for white. Uh, it looks like, you know, you might have to defend this thing. The problem for black is that it's not easy to move any of the pieces. We are just kind of thinking of let's like, let's chuck some stuff at black over here. We have some ideas of attacking. And we also have some ideas that it's not easy to move your pieces. Like this guy doesn't have a very good square. This guy doesn't really have a very good square. And black doesn't have a serious attack because you're never really going to be able to move this pawn without dropping your knight. There's some coordination that uh, will make it a little bit difficult for black. And if nothing else, we, we can chuck our king side pawns at black and just hope for the best here. So something like this is, uh, is relatively easy as a, a potential solution. But something like that shouldn't also be a fear for black potentially. Um... But I don't know. That's uh, that's the Urusov Gambit for you. I think we're actually going to conclude it here. I just thought it would be kind of interesting to go through it. I'm also going to do this with like all my other openings. Just kind of going through with Stockfish, just seeing what kind of ideas are missing. And uh, if I find some really cool stuff, maybe I'll let you guys know along the way. So if you did like that video, if you're a big fan of the Urusov Gambit and uh, you want some more of this content, let me know in the comments below. Uh, hit subscribe. Come on, just subscribe already. And I'll see you guys on another video.